Okay, opening statement. I think the word that comes to mind right now for me is survive. We survived that game. I, I don't think it was really pretty, um, except for the end. Um, it, it's tough sometimes as a coach, anytime you, you face an opponent who's, you know, oh for something or one for something or two for something, it's difficult at times to get your team to understand where that team is at and what the mentality is like. Um, and unfortunately, I think sometimes you have to actually live the experience before you truly understand. And that's what, that's what you found happened in this particular game. You know, and I talked to a couple of them um, at various times. When you're starving and you're hungry and, you, you know, your back's against the wall, what do you do? And this team kept fighting. I'm talking about Georgia Southern. That's what they did. They kept fighting. We gave them a window, gave them an opportunity. They only have one win. Well, your confidence level's up. You're playing well. This is something we can't continue to do um, whatsoever. The other thing is, and I told them, I, I, I hit one time out. I didn't even yell, scream. I just told them, look, I'm tired of saying the same thing over and over. I'm tired of saying play defense. I'm tired of saying you know, stop trading baskets. They hear it all the time. I'm always saying that in practice. We're not in the business of trading baskets. We need to stop a score and a stop to be able to move ahead. Against teams where you, you just have more talent and it's your night, you're going to be fine. Against teams on the road, it's going to be very difficult. And so that's that next piece that we have to get. So that's my disappointment with the game. But if I look at this game overall, am I happy? For sure I am. We had an opportunity to pull out another win. We had another opportunity for Clea Mays to show that she's one of the dominant rebounders in this conference. We had another opportunity for Taylor Deere to be able to step in into a role now for us and show that she's a young woman who can score in multiple ways. She can create for herself. She can create for others. She can knock down the three ball. Um, and it gives her another opportunity to continue to show us that she needs to be able to play defense to play as well. And of course, you know, you know I think we see Ariel's back. And I think that's fun for any fan. Any fan of Texas State women's basketball is always wondering about Ariel Anderson. They always want to know how number one did. And I think um, she, she's banged up, but she had a great night for us. Her, her, her numbers are solid if you look at the percentages as well as just the time and the minutes played. I mean, you're looking right here. The kid had five assists and zero turnovers. That's huge in a game where we had ten turnovers going into the halftime. Um, I will say those came, though, from our three, four, and fives, the majority of them. But I think that's great. That's the stat I look to for Ariel as well as a free throw line. Those are my two sticklers for her because I know the kid um, can score for us. I know she can create for others. But um, I'm, I'm pretty proud. And those are the things that I take away from this game today. And those are the things that I'm really happy about. Sorry I was long-winded today. <laughs> What did you see defensively from their ball players? So looking at their stats, three for eight. Uh, Butler at 13 points on 13 shots. You know, made it, made it difficult for them. Uh, and Claire, not even their guards. You know, two for 12, one for five. They really, when they drive in, they really didn't have much room to operate. What did you see from them that you were, you know, make it hard for those players at 12 the time? Well, one thing I tried. What did I try to do? Yeah. yeah what, Okay, one thing I try to do, I just try to basically get a hand in the passing lane. So they're, it made it hard for their point guards basically try to find their post players. And so that's what I've basically been trying to do, just basically making it harder for their guards to make the post entry pass. Because it's just like if they get in there, then I have to readjust myself. But if I do it from the jump and go ahead and get a hand in the passing lane, then it basically kind of limits them as far as getting post touches. So I just try to get a hand in there and make it as hard as possible. And clog up the paint, honestly. Okay, Coach Z, um, when I talked to you last, you really stressed that they were a good free throw shooting team. You guys killed them on the free throw shooting last night. Uh, you guys had they were 30 for 15, they were only 3 for 6. So, how does that, in your eyes, uh, play to your like, play to your advantage in, in order to be able to uh, get ahead in the game? I think it, what it shows me is that our kids did a good job of, of not fouling them. Um, and, and especially there towards the end, we talked about that's the way that you get for them to allow them to get back in the game when it got pretty close was for them to stop the clock and get to the free throw line. So they did. They did a good job. They started to attack. And we did a good job of moving our feet, and we also had good help rotation as well to deter that. So they had to kick the ball quite a bit for those mid-range shots versus being able to get wide, wide open, easy layups. That helps. Um, and as I watch a film, I'm actually going to watch, I'm going to be pretty critical from that piece where I really want to watch and see, is that truly what happened? Because if it is, that means we're progressing defensively, and that's going to be really exciting as we continue. Uh, Ariel, you finished with 21 points, I think you only had seven at halftime. Something changed. Did you see something, or did you realize, hey, we're a little, you know, we're a little slow on offense, you decided to score a little more on your own in the second half? Um, well, one, I think they the defense just started playing a little different because at first they were trying to get over the screens in the first half and then 
in the second half, they just tried to sag off a little bit. And also, Kalia setting a really good even screen really opened up the lane for me, not only to get off, get to the hole, but to give my teammates assists. Carol, did you, did you see anything that you did you sense though when they had kind of gotten it close that you needed to you know kind of take over the game a little bit because you did I think you had two layups there and then a three pointer that kind of stretched the lead and, and gave you gave your team an advantage. Well, yeah, not only just did, did I think, hey, let me go out and score, but I just buckled down and just knew that if Kalia set a really good eagle screen that it will open up for not only our post, me and our wing guard. So just being aggressive myself off of the eagle screen, I just knew that somebody would be open and somebody would knock down the shot. To, pick, to piggyback off of that, um, you immediately said that you got more aggressive. What does that do for your confidence as you get more aggressive and you find success like that and you start getting points in the paint and getting threes and kicking out to your wings like that? Well, I just think if you play aggressive, you keep the defense of uh, opponent on your on your toes, on their toes. If I play lackadaisical, they can just get, go under the screen and just be there and meet me wherever I go. But if I come off attacking with a head of steam, but also playing under control, I feel like no one can really stop me, honestly. Coach, you have a really versatile lineup at times. What does it say to finally see these lineups being able to come out, um, being able to show the team's versatility and flexibility? I think the nice thing is it gives them confidence in each other, understanding that different lineups can play together. I think there's always a little bit of apprehension when you're not used to playing with a particular group, but be, being able to put them out there live in a game situation, allow them to play together um, with a different lineup, I think is really important. So they have that confidence level. When you see a sub come in, you're like, all right, we're good, we're good. You don't have to worry about it. And I think that to me is the importance as we continue on. I mean, we're, we're, I think we're at the halfway mark. As we continue on to compete for a championship, it's really important. You never know what's going to happen in this particular season. Either somebody has a bad game, somebody's out, um, foul situation, injury, whatever it might be, you want to have confidence and I think that's important. And that's what I've enjoyed about being able to go really deep in the bench. Coach, the, this schedule has been really packed, especially mm -hmm. in this month. It sure has, Joe. What are your feelings on, you know, these real quick turnarounds, you know, where you play a game on a Thursday night and then you got to come back and play on a Saturday right after it? You know, I think um, looking at it um, glass half full, everyone has to go through the same thing regarding the prep piece. Now, of course, some of us have different situations regarding travel and things of that nature. You know, we started out, we, we had it rough, I felt. Um, but with that being said, all the student athletes are going through the same thing, all the staffs are. So really what's going to come down to is how well prepared is your staff. And, and for me, my staff's ability to be able to prepare the team um, and get me up to speed is really important because I take it one game at a time. So the game prep piece, you have to put a lot of trust into your assistant coaches knowing that they know their stuff, that they're going to be prepared because we only have one day. And really and truly, a lot of us aren't going to go with a hard practice tomorrow. You've got to rest some bodies and get their minds going. And so to me, it means the preparation piece is critical. You know, the will to win needs to be, you know, not as strong as the will to prepare to win. And I really do believe that I've had some great mentors in my past that are, are really good teachers and, and both of them um, that came down to our game prep and game prep is everything to me so we're able to put them in positions to win but honestly Joe we're all in the same situation the ones that are going to come ahead are the ones with the better players and the ones that prepare. Do you feel like maybe after the season though there's something to consider about you know maybe adjusting the schedule to? to well, you don't want to get into scheduling talk with this one here it's something we've talked about a lot to be honest with you, um, talks are ongoing. I know the ADs just met, they're constantly meeting on scheduling. You're talking on the men's and women's side and what's best for the game. I can tell you right now, I'm not happy at all with what the conference office has in the, in the future. And I've been very, very vocal about it. Um, I think it's really important to advance the women's game and doing so, games being played on particular days are better than others. I'm okay with double headers on Saturday. There's nothing wrong with that. I think it's, it's an advancement of the game regardless, it allows people to, to play. But when you put student athletes in tough situations where they're having to travel, specifically in our conference and they're having to travel far and then you're asking them to go to class it's difficult and if you don't give them a day off in between and you have the women playing on days like Monday which they're proposing right now when do when do the staff get off and when does it when do the players get off they don't have an opportunity to in addition to that the polls are always run on Mondays and excuse me Sundays and Mondays well how often are they looking at the Sunbelt Conference at that point 
They're not. That's not an advancement of the game. So again, without getting too upset right now, it's still ongoing, nothing set within the conference. But I think student athlete welfare should be the most important thing when you take a look at travel considerations. Understanding that at you know at the BCS levels they may have the opportunity to charter every flight, but some of us don't. And so for the majority of us that don't, you need to take in consideration class times, how is that affecting them? travel considerations as well. How does it affect them as well as your staff? Because a lot of us do have families and we do have lives outside of the, the basketball arena. And all those things need to go to consideration just like we look at our student athletes. So right now, it'd be tough for me to say because nothing's been decided, but um, I'm definitely making sure that I'm really vocal about how I feel about scheduling. And that's on both sides. And I'll tell you, Danny feels the same. Obviously, aside from Ariel, um, you had a very uh, even keel in the score uh, in the score department from many different people. And I, you talked to me before about the fact that you have confidence putting anybody out there. You have so many scores that you can put out there. And you have confidence with the ball, um, and that just proved the same thing again tonight. So, uh, how does that, I mean, reinforce your your already proven like thought process that you can send those people out there without any, like having her on the floor, having Megan on the floor? I kind of flip it to be honest with you, and I said this in a timeout, I don't know if these two were in it or not or heard me, but I literally said this, I could give a flip about your scoring right now because all of you can score. What I care about is defense. Who's going to defend for us? And so in my mind, outside of the times where we struggle scoring, we've had some games, you know, we're not at the top of the leaderboard in, in scoring. We've had some, some games where we've struggled scoring. Um, but knowing that we have a variety of young women that can score for me is exciting, but truly is who's going to get the stops. And then from there, we're going to have to work on the lineup to be honest with you. You know, Erica May plays a lot because of defense. She's a spark. She's not a prolific scorer for us, but she finds a way. You know, she's an excellent free throw shooter from the free throw line. She's really good at attacking. But you find that young woman playing a lot because she's a great defender. Need somebody else to step up because what you're going to find yourself in a situation in certain lineups, you can just replace one scorer with another scorer and get a better defender on the floor. And that's really what I need them to understand and see. Coach, is it something you change or what the defense gave you? But, I mean, had you know, 13 free throws in the second half and only two in the first half. Is that something you did or the defense? I didn't do anything. These young women did everything <laughs> and they followed through. We talked about attacking. It's something we talked about from the beginning. The previous teams here at Texas State that we've had have been really good at getting the free throw line. I think we need to get back to that. That's part of, of, of who I am and part of our roots of just being aggressive and getting scores in the paint, whether it be a post feed or whether it be our ability to be able to get to the free throw line. A free throw line is an attack in the paint. We talk about it. A post feed is an attack in the paint and a layup is an attack in the paint.